tonight we're going to have a special session on marriage cancer. What is marriage cancer? Understanding how to identify it, how to fix it. When you're done understanding what marriage cancer is, you're going to understand the answer to three basic questions. And guys, this is going to be such an important training. You may want to grab a pen and paper, listen to this. You may want to listen to this twice because there's going to be some gold that I unload on you over here. You have to understand the answer to the following three questions. And these are questions which almost nobody talks about. Question number one, why in the world can't my wife say what she wants? Why can't your wife say clearly exactly why she what she wants? Why is there a constant changing list, a changing list of expectations, a to-do list, a, the pleasing list, the honey-do list? Why can't you just say clearly what it is that she wants and be consistent with it? Number two, why can't you involve your wife in the marriage transformation process? Why is it impossible or why is it going to backfire if you have her involved? Number three, why can't you just listen? Some guys are at the point of, of despair that well, some people get there before despair and they're just, they approach it from the perspective of, you know what, I'm just going to do whatever she says. Simple. If I do everything she says, I'll be okay. We're going to talk about how that does not work, why it doesn't work, and the proof that it doesn't work. And once you understand what marriage cancer is, and you understand the answer to those three questions, why she can't tell you what she wants, why you can't involve her in saving the marriage, and number three, why you can't listen to everything she says, it's going to open up the way you understand what's been going on in your marriage and why your effort wasn't helping. And this is critical. This is like super, super critical to understand because... In my opinion, medical malpractice is when you rush to make a judgment, offer a solution without understanding the problem, right? Like if I, I think I've once given this example over here. If you're standing in the office coughing up blood and the doctor just walks in and says, oh, you probably had too much burritos. That's malpractice. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happens in many places. Like, so if you're standing coughing up blood, it could be a punctured lung. You can't just say too many burritos. <laughs> right? It's a ridiculous thing. But nevertheless, marriage counselors and therapists and the people that promote the philosophy of marriage takes two are doing just that. They look at a problem and they just say, oh, well, just buy her flowers, say appreciation, find out her love language, help around the house, be more involved with the kids, give more physical touch. And we're going to blow that out of the park today and show how that's not true, how that's not working, how that's hurting marriages and why that is. And therefore, it's so critical to understand what marriage cancer is, because until you understand the problem, what's going to happen is you're going to plunge blindly towards a solution. And here's the, here's the deal. Usually, when I speak to guys, what, what's happening is these guys, most of the guys I talk to, have a pretty good heart. They're not really selfish. They may be confused, they may be clueless, but they're not selfish. And there are certain pieces that are missing that's causing all the problems. So I'm not going to make light of it. It is a, they, they are suffering a lot in their marriage. They have marriage cancer. But what's causing it is, is usually not a lot of things that are happening wrong. It's a few things that they're missing, which is causing all the other problems. My point is, until you figure that out, A, you're going to keep blaming your wife. And B, she's going to be frustrated because she's going to see you investing effort in the marriage, but it's not going to mean anything to her. And we're going to explain that tonight. So tonight's training is really a critical training, a fundamental training. And it's really important to understand marriage cancer because if you don't get this, literally everything, all your other effort that you're trying to do is going to be a super waste of time, I promise you. So let's get into it. And by the way, guys, if you're here and you're listening to this live, um, even if it's later, if it's, you listen to the recording, let me know. Do you believe you're married to your soulmate? This is really an important piece. Are you married to your soulmate? Because this, what I'm going, to, the person I'm speaking to and the types of people we can help, number one, must be married. Well, some people don't believe in soulmates. So what I mean to say is, are you, are you married to a woman who you're absolutely sure is right for you? Some people believe in soulmates. Some just know that she's right. But if you're not sure, like if, you, if you're not 100% sure you're married to the right woman and the reason why you're trying to transform your marriage is just because of convenience or because it's your third marriage or because of religious reasons or because of the kids, 
even though I respect that, but I won't be able to help you. I, I do, in order for me to help you, you would have to be 100% sure you're married to the right woman. So number one, you have to be married to the right woman. Number two, you have to absolutely care about her. You have to have the desire to make her happy. It can't just be a temporary fix. David, just tell me how to manipulate her, how to give her a technique or a trick, how to get her to respect me or resume our intimate life or not to yell at me in front of the kids or to appreciate what it, it can't be super it must be a long-term permanent solution because otherwise everything else you're going to do is going or everything else i'm going to tell you is going to be manipulation and i'm not going to be involved in temporarily manipulating your wife so if that's you if you believe you're married to your soulmate or you believe you're married to the right woman just check in over here let us know and number two obviously you also have to have marriage cancer there are two types of men in this group there are people who have marriage cancer and there are some guys in this group who don't have marriage cancer and there it's just some neglect there's been some neglect in a marriage and the way you can know the difference really is the guys that if you binge watch all the videos over here all the free videos and you see a significant major change in your marriage which happens to quite a few men that means that you don't really have marriage cancer or maybe you were in the very very early stages of marriage cancer and if you go through all these videos and they inspire you and you get the clarity and you get the understanding, but you don't see a significant change in the marriage, then you probably have marriage cancer. And that's that's one way of knowing. So how do you know if you have marriage cancer, besides watching a bunch of videos and figuring that out? One way of knowing right now is by when good ideas don't work. One sign of marriage cancer, really virtually across all situations, is that you can read books, you can be in Facebook groups, you can watch videos, they can inspire you, they make sense, but it doesn't change your life. It doesn't change your wife. It doesn't make an impact. And that's basic, that is basic marriage cancer. That, you know, you could be struggling with communication, and you work in communication, and you read about communication, but communication doesn't get better, it just gets worse. If you're struggling with sex, or lack of sex, and you work on it, and it doesn't get better. And the reason for that, and what I'm going to give you right now is gold, is because you need to understand marriage cancer. The problem in these marriages is not the externals. It's not the communication. It's not the respect. It's not the sex. It's not the lack of appreciation. That's the symptom. That's the result of the problem. The real problem is marriage cancer. What is marriage cancer? Some of you guys have already seen this because we've had similar videos, but here I'm combining some of the ideas we've, we've spoken before. And... Um, and we're putting it all together to really help you. Marriage cancer is expressed in the following six symptoms. And you don't have to have all six. If you have just three of them, you probably have marriage cancer. Number one, this must be present. Do you have unconditional love for your wife? You really, really love her, but she doesn't feel it or trust it. In other words, on her radar system, if I asked her, you know, I asked her, Katie, how much love do you feel from Eric? Do you feel 100%? Do you feel and trust 100% of his love? If she says less than 80%, that's marriage cancer. That's marriage cancer. Which means we're talking about a situation where you genuinely love her. We're not talking about where you're like, you're just saying it because you want to sound cool and you know, you want to be accepted. But you really, really love her. You really care about her. You care about her happiness. And she still doesn't feel and trust your love. That's one symptom of marriage cancer. Number two, you can't please her. You can't figure out how to make her happy. She either keeps changing her list or she doesn't tell you or she says something and then you do it and it doesn't help anyway. And there are really two types of... How, how people handle it is very different. Some guys will, will desperately try to do everything she wants to, in a hope to please her and some people will just give up. That's the truth. They'll give up because, you know, there's no point. I can't please you anyway. And I care about you, but I can't please you. So why work so hard? There's no judgment. It's just two different ways how to handle it. But that's another symptom of marriage cancer. You can't figure out how to please her consistently. Number three, you can't identify. And this is big, by the way. You can't identify big problems in the marriage when they're still small. So problems in a marriage don't, aren't just explosion. You shouldn't be getting blindsided. Unfortunately, that happens a lot. Getting blindsided means that you have no clue, no awareness of little problems. You only see a problem when it smacks you in the face 
and she says, hey, I've been frustrated for years or like from, I haven't had intimacy in two years. And, and you're like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Or I want a trial separation or I, I don't think it's going to work or I'm, I'm never going to be happy here. And you're like, oh, it's a surprise to you. That's symptom number three of marriage cancer. When you don't have the ability to actually see these things brewing when they're very, very, very small, that is marriage cancer. Now, number four is that she has an image in her head of you, which isn't true. So she has an idea of who you are in her head, which is not a real reflection of your personality. She feels that you're selfish or you're impatient or you're not loving or you're manipulative or you're insincere. And it's not true. It may have been true, but it's no longer true. And you can't get that image out of her head. That is classic marriage cancer. And again, if you have just one of these symptoms, it's not marriage cancer. But if you have three or more, because because it's possible as a result of some basic neglect in a, in a marriage, you might get one of these symptoms. But if you have if you have three or more, sometimes two, depending on which ones they are, that that would definitely be marriage cancer. But that's number four, very common. Number five is not very common, but to someone who suffers from it, it's a big time. It's a big thing. Number five is, and by the way, guys, do you relate to this? How many of these do you relate to so far? Please check in. I'll check the chat soon. Number five is I have opinions. I have needs. Legitimate ones. Whatever they are. It could be about sex. It could be about respect. It could be about how to educate the kids, about how to run our finances. It doesn't matter. It could be about being accountable and staying connected and, you know, just having a transparent relationship. And it seems to you that you have to keep giving up on your needs and your opinions in order to please her. The only way to get her to get off of your back and to stop complaining and to and to just be happy or at least not harass you is to keep giving in to her and this one it doesn't apply in all marriages but when it applies because of your personality of, of what you need this is this sucks okay and that's marriage cancer and it took me a while to realize this is marriage cancer because there are a lot of guys who really feel like yeah i'm doing everything she wants and all that yeah but if you keep on giving doing whatever she wants and that is that's going to hurt you. We'll talk about it more soon. In just a couple of minutes. Tonight. Like, if you just do everything she wants, you're set up for frustration and failure. For a bunch of reasons. So just doing whatever she wants and giving up on what's important to you regularly is not going to serve the marriage. And number six. This applies to some cases. Not all, not most. That you lose emotional control. That you know you should be, be behaving in a certain way. And despite your effort, despite your awareness, despite books, despite counseling, you still lose control, emotional control, whether it's over your anger or your anxiety or your guilt or your low self-esteem. Like, you know, you should be acting in a certain way, but you can't help it. And you feel very, very, very differently than what you know you should be feeling. So you either can't control your emotions or your reactions. And that's a result, again, of marriage cancer. It's a result of the, of the deterioration. Usually these things feed each other because she's not feeling your love. So that might affect your emotional um, stability, for example. It's not a judgment, it's a reality. Because marriage cancer, it's not a cookie-cutter thing. It's not like a one-size-fits-all. There is there is a framework under which it operates. Not everybody's the same. I mean, most people are not. So that is marriage cancer. So ask yourself, as you're going through this video, write it down. Like, which one of those symptoms, six symptoms apply to you? Is it that she you feel unconditional love for her and she doesn't feel it? Is it, number two, you can't figure out how to make her happy is it number three you can't see big problems when they're still small and fixable you only see them once it slaps you on the face number four she has an image in her head of you which isn't true number five you have to keep on giving up to please her number six it, you it's affecting your emotional control well, nothing to be embarrassed of. no judgment it's just a reality some people do get their emotional control gets gets affected now so the difference between marriage cancer and not marriage cancer is listen carefully guys in marriage cancer, well, let me start not, not marriage cancer. If you don't have marriage cancer and you work in a symptom, you fix it. For example, you work in communication, you, you have a problem with communication, you work on it, and it gets fixed. You have a problem with sex, you work on it, it gets fixed. You have a problem with respect, transparency, finances, kids, whatever it is, you work in it, it gets fixed. That's not marriage cancer. That's normal living. Couples have issues. Every marriage will have issues. They work in it, they fix it, it's done. It may come up again later, a different way. They they're working it again. They fix it. It's done. With marriage cancer, it doesn't get fixed. You think you're making progress. 
you look back three months later, six months later, it didn't get better. It either stayed or it got worse. Because, again, the issue is, the reason, I'm telling you why, the reason is because you have to get good at identifying what are those unconditional love blockers. What? Why is it that you feel unconditional love for her and she doesn't feel it? Before you get into respect or appreciation or spending or kids, you need to understand that. That's far more critical because if you don't get that, you'll keep on going from one thing to the next. You'll never be done. She'll tell you, do this around the house, help more around the house, cook, clean, be more available. You'll do it. It's still not going to work. And we'll get, we're going to explain a little more why. So let's get into the, um, the three big questions about healing marriage cancer. And I said it before, but I'm going to repeat it. Why, number one, why can't she tell you what she really wants? Why is it that your wife can't tell you how to please her. Many of you guys have experienced this. She gives you a list. She tells you what to do. You do it, and it doesn't work. It doesn't hit the spot. She tells you it didn't do it the right way. It's still not working. I, you know, you could do all the... How many times it happened? I was talking to a guy. He was doing her list for weeks and months, and finally she says, it's not going to... I need a, I need a trial separation, for example, or it's not going to work. You don't get it. How many guys... How many times your wife told you... Let me know in the chat. She said, you don't get it. You just don't get it. Let me know. Because this is like, this is a classic, this happens all the time. But why is it? See, here's the gold. And write this down because really this is, what I'm giving you now is powerful stuff. The reason why her her lists, her to-do lists are shifting, number one is because she cannot identify the feeling she wants. Listen carefully. Women want to experience a certain feeling this is not a judgment of them this is not this is not a nothing negative in any way there's nothing negative in this group about women or marriage the reason why when you talk to men is because i believe and i've seen over and over again that a man with a solid strategy and the right heart and the right commitment will turn around and create an amazing marriage but let's be open over here why is it that she can't tell you what she wants because there's a certain feeling she's trying to recapture and there are hundreds of types of feelings and it's confusing. It's confusing to her. And just like it's confusing to you. Many times you're you're feeling something that's really confusing. I'll give you a simple example. Very, very simple example because there are hundreds of examples and it could get complex. Sometimes you can feel anger but really it's not anger. If you go dig down, it's not anger, it's guilt. But it's easier to feel anger than to feel guilt or to admit that, you, that you're feeling anxiety. So very often it could be fear masquerading. Fear, the real feeling, but it's covered by anger. So similarly, when there's like hundreds of feelings and a woman wants a, feel, a certain feeling and she thinks she's going to get it by you cleaning the house or by you taking care of the kids or by you, I don't know what, doing what she, whatever her list, whatever her list is, you cannot hit a feeling with lists. The guys in, my, in Amazing Marriage Fast Track know this, right? When, when guys who are who come into Amazing Marriage Fast Track as clients, we cut back on what they're actually doing in the marriage because most of it is a waste of time. Most of it is confirming that you're clueless. You cannot hit a feeling with a list. It's not possible. You might do it by mistake, but but it's not it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna last. So number two, she cannot identify the feeling. And number and number one, she can't identify the feeling. And number two. You can't catch a feeling, even if you could identify the feeling. Let's say she could figure out what is it that she wants. Is it, is it that she really wants emotional safety or importance? Or she wants to feel loved or she wants to feel excited or she wants to feel passion. There's all different types of feelings. And, and she can't tell this to you. She won't tell you what the feeling is, number one, because it's hard, it's confusing to figure out what it is. Number two, even if you figure out what it is, you cannot hit it with externals. If, let's, say, let's say, for the purpose of making a very simple lesson for you, let's say... I'll pick something very, very basic. Let's say she wants to feel important. She will not feel important by you doing all her lists. It doesn't happen. Because feelings don't change by, ex by externals. Feelings change by you understanding how feelings operate, by you playing those buttons for her own good, not manipulating her. But it doesn't happen by just doing what she wants. Another reason why she can't tell you, even if she knows what it is, is because she doesn't trust you. Very often, once you have marriage cancer set in, she doesn't trust you to open up. So she's going to keep, it's actually more convenient for her. It's more efficient for her to pick externals because it makes, it makes her feel like she's doing something 
and she's telling you something without telling you anything. She's not going to go honest and vulnerable and tell you what's really in her heart. She's not going to do that. Either because she doesn't know or because she doesn't, she doesn't trust you. Another reason why she can't tell you, and this, by the way, is sometimes existent even without non, even without marriage cancer. This exists sometimes, but this always exists with marriage cancer. Okay, so even some of you guys who don't have marriage cancer, this will you'll find this too. It's because there's a desire in a woman that you should figure it out. You figure me out. Figure out what I need. I shouldn't have to tell you what I want. I shouldn't have to tell you how to handle me, how to handle my emotions, how to remember what I told you in the past. She wants you to remember what she told you six years ago. Now, as crazy as you think it is, but that's what she wants. She wants you to understand and get her, and, and she shouldn't have to repeat things. And the guy listens to this, he's like, what the hell? How am I supposed to do this? What do you mean? But that's what, I'm, I'm telling you why she cannot tell you what she really wants. It's because it's hard to identify the feeling. It's hard to hit a feeling by doing externals. You're not going to get it by doing a to-do list. You're not going to give her that sense of whatever that feeling is. Even if she knows what it is, she, you won't get it by doing what she wants. Because there's no connection. You don't feel important by cleaning the house. She thinks you, but she won't. And then what happens is you do all that list and then she gets, she feels, she doesn't get that feeling done. So she wakes up and she's frustrated. So she finds another thing what you needed to do or what you did wrong. Instead of recognizing that you guys, that your ability to read hers is completely off. Okay. Let's go to the second question. The second question is, why is it I love this question. Why can't you just involve her? Why can't you just sit her down? And this is like this is like a common sense question. And by the way, this is exactly what marriage counselors do and say and promote. You see, marriage takes two. Sit her down and say, "Hey, listen, um, Katie, let's talk. Let's just try to work on it. Let's make this marriage work out. And what are we could we do? And what are we going to do together for us and for the kids and for our future and blah 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 and all that. Why why doesn't that work? Why can't you do that? So. Let me just say something common sense. You could do that if your marriage is relatively fine. In other words, when I say marriage takes one, the condition is you have to be married to the right person. You have to be married to someone who you truly love. You have to be married to someone who you truly care about her happiness and you're sure she's the right one. Now, in a healthy marriage, of course, it, it takes two. But to step into, to create that healthy marriage, to create the leadership and the love, that takes one when it's not existing. Now, why can't you involve her? And, this, and conversely, why is it that marriage counseling doesn't work? Why is it that people can go to counseling and things just get worse and just keep pointing fingers? So reason number one is very basic. It's extremely basic. Write this down. Because it makes unconditional love impossible. This, by the way, is gold. You cannot, no matter what strategy you use, no matter what you're trying to do for your marriage, whether you have marriage cancer, whether you don't have marriage cancer, it doesn't make a damn of a difference. It makes no difference. You cannot and will not transform your marriage if she doesn't feel the unconditional love. That's one That's one of the first signs, by the way, of of, uh, uh, of marriage cancer, is that you have, like I said before, like you have it and she doesn't feel it. She doesn't feel it. She doesn't trust it. 100%. So you cannot do, if you're doing a plan which undermines unconditional love, you're screwed. And here comes the point. You ready? If you insist that she be involved in the process, it is impossible. I repeat, it is impossible to invest consistently with your full heart in a marriage and create unconditional love if you're doing it together. Why? Because you're going to always look at each other and measure what I did, what you did, what I didn't do, what you didn't do. The marriage counselor said this, and I did it, and I, I did what he, what he or she said I should do, and I, I said appreciation, and we spent 10, 15 minutes, and then I, I did everything you said, and look at you. You're still complaining. You're still frustrated. You're still unhappy. Whether you say it or not doesn't matter, but even if it's in your mind, she's going to feel that energy. Guarantee you she's already felt it. You're walking around with resentment and frustration and anger, and you think she doesn't feel it, and she does. Just just simple example. You are blocking unconditional love when you force a couple, for both of them to get involved, they're going to constantly look and measure who did it right and who did it wrong. And, happens to be another problem over here, the one who talks better sounds better. Very often, it's the husband that can talk better. So the husband, will, by the, by the therapist or by the counselor, will say, 
well, look, I did it. You said we should do A, B, and C, and I did it, and I read this book, and I said this appreciation, and I looked into her eyes, and I cleaned around the house, and I was home on time, and I told her when I'm coming, and, and look, she's still a mess. And very often, the husband is a better talker, and he sounds better, but he missed the whole point. He has no clue how to identify those subconscious things that are screwing things up, why she can't see her real needs, like, like the marriage cancer things I said before. He can't see small problems when they're still small. He sees them only when they're big. He can't identify what's blocking unconditional love. So all he can do is externals. But that r guarantees you that she's not going to feel unconditional love because you're constantly looking at what she should be doing and what she didn't do. Look, and, and then you're looking for appreciation and validation and approval. You did everything she wanted and she's still not happy. So that definitely robs her from feeling your unconditional love. And we'll prove it, by the way. We, we've had this in this many videos in the inner cat explain that. And we'll probably do another one shortly. Not tonight. We don't have time to get into that. But she definitely, when you're carrying around that feeling of frustration at her, it is impossible for her not to feel it. You think it's private. It's not private. And that's one of the big mistakes with marriage cancer is you believe that your thoughts and your feelings are private. Some of them are. Some of them are not, depending on, depending on what's going on. Most of them are not. So, but we're, getting, we're not going to get into that tonight. Another thing, and this is super, super important. Do you know why you can't involve her? And this is so basic. When I realized this, I was, I was blown away. It was a couple of years ago. And I was working with some clients. And I was like, I was like this is a new thing, a new, new revelation. You know why you can't involve her? Because of timing, my friend. By the time you wake up and want to take responsibility for the marriage, she believes in her mind for most many of you guys this doesn't apply to all of you it applies to, to some of you she believes she already invested a lot of effort true or not true doesn't matter here's what you gotta understand it doesn't matter if it's true or not true but if, her, if in her mind she feels she invested a lot of effort in the marriage then when you come and wake up and say okay i'm ready to invest I'm, i, I want to work in the marriage even if she fakes it externally internally she believes she's done because she already did it for eight years and she's not interested in putting on putting in even another eight weeks in it and that's why this explains another interesting mystery why is it that many many women will go to counseling with their husbands and then the husband finds out and by the way if you feel comfortable you can you can share you can share this i'm not going to say it for you but some of you guys have gone through this share it over here in the chat how many guys have you guys have experienced that you go to marriage counseling and you find out six months later, eight months later, nine months into it, that she's been having an affair during counseling. How does that match up? Why, why does it match up? How could it be that she's officially putting effort into the marriage and then you find out that she's having an emotional affair or even a physical affair, she's messaging another guy and she's totally, you know, she's not in it. Why is it? She's not a bad person. Some of you guys believe she's a bad person. But I can't help you. Like, if you really believe she's a bad person, I can't help you. Right? If you're amazing and she's awful, I can't help you. But most happens many times with good women too. Why is it? Very simple. Because of what I just said. Because in her heart, I don't know if you can hear my kids screaming. <laughs> Hopefully you don't. I do. Um, it's bedtime now. So the, the reason, she believes she already put in all that effort. So therefore, externally, she'll still make believe, yeah, I'll go to counseling. I'll do what he says. I'll be involved. But in her heart, she disconnected. She believes she's done because she already did so much for the marriage and that's why you can't expect her to take responsibility because she thinks he's done and she is done so you cannot manipulate her or argue her into it because even if she does it she's going to be it's only going to be superficial and then you're going to go through the same the same road the same you're never going to get out of it and therefore, you have to be the guy to take responsibility. That's why you have to step up as a husband and say, I got this. I see the problem. I see where we're heading. I see what it's costing me and my kids and my family and my finances and my emotional health. And I'm going to save this family. Turn it around. I'm going to create. It's not just the people who, whose marriages are terrible, by the way. The earlier your marriage cancer is, the easier it is to fix it. And the quicker you're going to get results. It's not just for people who are just limping along. Actually, if you, in fact, I'll be honest with you, many of you guys know, some of you guys are watching this and, and you you don't qualify for a for AMFT. Why? Because your marriage cancer is too advanced. If your marriage cancer is too advanced, we won't we won't take you. We have a whole rating system and all that. But my point is, the guys who see the seeds, they see the the warning signs, they see where it's heading, and they fix it early on. It, it's beautiful what happens to the marriages because you can turn around and and really 
um, nip it in, you, could, you could identify those subconscious energy blockers, the things that are blocking your unconditional love, the things that are blocking you from seeing the truth, seeing from block, the things that are blocking you from seeing all those little warning signs, and you become an expert. And you don't have to put in so much effort because you have to put in strategic effort, but not a lot of effort. You have to aim. Like you, heard, you may have heard me say, aim before you fire. you got to look where you're firing. But it's not about working hard. It's not about just doing her to-do list. Okay? Now, back to what I was saying. So it's not about... Uh, it's not just about the worst possible cases because if your case is too far gone, we won't be able to help you anyway. Now, the third reason why you can't involve why you can't involve her is, is similar to what I said before. She wants you to figure it out. This is a basic reason that you'll hear me say it very often because it's true. There's a there's a natural desire even with marriage marriage cancer. There's a certain desire to. You figure me out. You should know how to handle me. So that just feeds into the previous point. The bottom line is, the bottom line is this, and God, we're running late, so we've got maybe another five, ten minutes, and I gotta jump. The the involving her is dumb. I don't have to say it another way. Insisting on having her participate in the marriage transformation process is dumb. Because of the reasons I just said, it blocks, it makes you judgmental of each other, it makes you resentful of each other, it makes you keep measuring what the other one is doing. The timing is off. By the time you want to do it, she's already done. And it violates the natural instinct of a woman is figure me out. That's natural, by the way, even without marriage cancer. It's figure me out. You figure it out. I don't want to have to tell you everything. And that's why counseling fails. And that's why when you involve her, even without a counselor, it fails. Because the reasons we just said. Does it make sense, guys? Are you with me? Number three, and this is the final piece of today. Why can't you just do what she says? So if, if you listen to everything as I said now, you already understand it. <laughs> Number one, because she doesn't know. She doesn't know how to hit the feelings because we just explained. You, if you're doing everything she's saying, it means that you're going to be following somebody who has no clue what feelings they want to accomplish. And just listen to what we just said the past 25 minutes. I mean, that's why you can't just do what she says. Number two, here's another point. The desperation, this is a new thing. I haven't said it before. Your desperation, when you just do whatever she wants, it confirms to her that you're clueless. I hate to say it. I was thinking how to say it in a nice way. I couldn't figure it out. When you just do whatever she wants, you're confirming to her your inability to A, figure out what's going on, and B, B to penetrate her heart. That desperation is the worst thing. It really shows her you don't know what you're doing. And number three, another reason is because it actually ru ruins your motivation. And this is like such common sense. And so many guys make this mistake. If you keep doing whatever she wants all the time, how long can you do it for? How long, let me ask you a question. How long could you give up on things that you believe are important? I'm not talking about selfishness. I'm talking about things that you believe are important, legitimately important. Your intimacy, your respect, the, the, the way the kids treat you, the way she treats you in front of the kids, the way her expectations, her demands, her complaining. How long can you go on and keep on giving up what's important to you just to please her? You can do it in the short term. You cannot do it in the long term. It ruins your motivation. And what happens is when you ruin your own motiv motivation, to invest in the marriage, guess what happens? You have now less motivation. You're robbing your own fuel. By doing whatever she wants, I'm going to be blunt, by doing whatever she wants, you're robbing your own ability to invest in the marriage because it's pissing you off. It's frustrating you. You're frustrated at her and you're frustrated at yourself. And that energy cannot be used productively for the marriage. So you can make me, you may make believe in the short run that you're doing everything, but it's going to, it's, it's robbing you. Not only it's robbing you, she actually feels it while it's happening. So you think it's not happening. You think that it's not hurting the marriage. She actually feels all your resentment and your frustration. We've proved that over and over again with the inner cat videos, like I said before. So you go around making believe that, you, that, oh no, I'm just doing what she wants and somehow it's going to help. If you're frustrated about it, she's feeling it. And if she's feeling it, not only is robbing your motivation, she's actually, it means nothing to her because she sees you're faking. <laughs> she sees you're faking. That's the truth. She sees that you're desperate. And if you're desperate, that's not attractive. Desper desperation is not a masculine energy. It's not. That's the truth. And the final reason why you can't just do whatever she wants is, it's, it's really the summary. It's not another, it's just a conclusion. Because eventually you're going to give up. The damage happens even before you give up. Because even before you give up, she feels a desperation. But the final, for, for people who want to make it really simple, eventually you're going to give up. Because you can't keep giving up, sacrificing your needs over and over and over again. Okay? So, 
that is what that is about understanding what marriage cancer is and why you can't solve it by involving her or listening to everything she says or or, or, or why can't she tell you what she wants so the bottom line for mar marriage cancer is nothing works you can work on respect and like the issue is not respect everybody thinks they respect each other so, so how can you work on respect I have guys over here say the, the problem is respect no it's not if it was respect and you worked on it it would get fixed the fact that you keep having more and more problems means that the issue is not respect the issue isn't communication either if there was communication, how come you knew how to communicate when you got married, when you got engaged, when you fell in love? Nobody taught you how to communicate. Same thing with sex. Great marriages have great sex. Not because of, not because of the sex, it's because of great marriage. If you look at all the research of great marriages, they'll all tell you the reason why we have a great marriage is 20 different reasons. One of them is sex. One of them. Not because we have a great sex. So automatically, we have great sex because you have a great marriage. You don't have a great marriage because of great sex. So it really goes, and but people who, don't have, who have marriage cancer tend to focus on the symptoms, the sex, the respect, as opposed to those six areas that we said before. So let me sum it up. Let me just sum this up. Let me see if there's any questions over here. Cool, James. Yes, yeah, somebody will reach out to you. All right? Probably, t probably this evening, latest tomorrow morning. So let's just sum this up. Externals don't work. Helping around the house, paying for the bills, telling her appreciation, giving her flowers, offering her to go on a date. Five love languages. Classic example. Why doesn't it work? Why doesn't five love languages work? It works if you have a pretty decent marriage. If you have 90% good marriage, it'll work. But if you have less than 90%, it's not going to work. Why? Because even if you figure out the love language, even if the theory is true for some, for some marriages, and you figure it out, but she doesn't want your physical touch. She wants it for somebody else. She doesn't want your appreciation. She doesn't trust it. I'm just giving you an idea of why books why techniques, why external things don't work. You have to be able to bust through and identify what the hell is blocking that unconditional love. Why is it if I have love, she doesn't feel it? I'll talk more about it next week, God willing. Okay, we've had, by the way, you can also find these videos in the past, uh, all the intercat videos and the aim before your fire videos, uh, videos explain that too. So, but the, but the reason all these things don't help is because they're externals. So, the sexual problems, the communication problems, the respect problems, the disrespect in front of the disrespect in front of the kids. All that is a result of marriage cancer. That is not the cause of your problems. It is it is not the cause of your problems. It is the result of your problem. It is the result of marriage cancer, not the cause of it. Does it make sense, guys?